Peptide receptor radiotherapy consists of a high energy radionuclide particle, lutetium-177, that is bound to a uh, dotatate which binds somatostatin receptors avidly. Thus, in our neuroendocrine tumors that generally have very high expression of somatostatin receptors, the drug is uh, preferentially bound to tumor tissue and very much less so to normal tissues in the body. This delivers the radiation directly to the tumor in a selective way throughout the body. Uh, certainly other tissues of the body have somatostatin receptors on them, such as a pituitary gland, adrenal gland, uh, ovaries, uh, testes, uh, and there will be some uh, radiation delivered to these organs, uh, and as well as some that will be delivered to the kidneys and the bone marrow. Uh, however, this therapy generally has been quite safe and well tolerated and uh, we hope that this will continue to significantly advance the care of our patients. Currently there's a phase three randomized trial that demonstrated that in patients with mid-gut carcinoid tumors who had progressed on a somatostatin analog that PRRT significantly and fairly dramatically increased progression-free survival. And we'll wait over the next few years to see if this translated to a benefit in overall survival, uh, but it was clearly a significant advance in those patients. It's a little harder to know where it will fit into the treatment algorithm for patients with neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas primary, lung primary, or unknown primary sites. Depending on the approval decision by the FDA, it may be available uh, for those patients, and physicians and multidisciplinary centers will have to compare other treatment modalities for each individual patient that might be available, such as systemic chemotherapy, surgical techniques, um, other uh, systemic therapies with what we know about peptide receptor radiotherapy from the large experience in Europe that has accumulated over the last uh, decade or more as it has been standard therapy there. Patients uh, should be selected for the use of peptide receptor radiotherapy uh, by imaging techniques that are able to document that the tumors are very uh, richly populated with somatostatin receptors. Uh, the Octrea scan that has been used for many years has been the standard of care generally for that treatment selection in Europe and on the uh, Netter 1 randomized clinical trial here in the United States. With Gallium 68 uh, PET imaging uh, that is now more widely available in the United States and across the world, it is felt this is an even better way of trying to define tumors that strongly express mastatin receptors. The letter one was the first randomized phase three study of peptide radio receptor radiotherapy of a radio-labeled somatostatin analog. Uh, the population studied was patients with mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors. Mid-gut means small intestine, jejunum ileum, and proximal colon, the cecum. This is the most common type of well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. All patients had to have disease progression on standard doses of octreotide. That progression needed to be actually a resist progression at baseline, but it could have occurred over a period as long as three years. The um, experimental arm of the study was a standard course of lutetium dotatate, 200 millicuries every eight weeks for four treatments. Uh, the control arm of the study was high-dose octreotide, 60 milligrams every four weeks. The primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival by central uh, blinded radiology review. And what the study showed was a very substantial improvement in PFS. Uh, the hazard ratio for progression of deaths was 0.21, meaning there was a 79% improvement in risk of, of progression. Uh, on the octreotide arm, the median progression-free survival was 8.4 months. It was not reached with lutetium-177 at the time of um, uh, primary endpoint analysis. A secondary endpoint was response rate. Um, the response rate with lutetium dotatate was 18%. It was only 3% with high-dose octreotide. So there was a very significant uh, improvement in objective response rate. Uh, overall survival, also an important secondary endpoint. And at the time of this primary analysis, the hazard ratio for survival uh, was 0.4. In other words, a 60% improvement in risk of death uh, with a p-value of 0.004. Although it's important to emphasize this is a preliminary analysis of survival, so the threshold statistical significance was even higher. It was 0 0.000085. So the mature analysis of overall survival will take place in, in several years. For now, all we can say about survival is that the early data is very encouraging.
The Netherlands study is a fascinating study because it has answered a question um, that was um, very important. In Europe, we have been using PRT for many, many years, but just now we finally have a randomized phase three trial that look into that in mid-gut. And the results are fascinating. You have a significant improvement in progression-free survival of that disease, of that disease. But also, uh, in a recent um, uh, publication and presentation, um, the study also showed that PRT really improves the quality of life of patients, decrease the amount of diarrhea, increase the um, physical function of patients, um, and other aspects of quality of life. So in addition to um, having tumor control, you have a substantial improvement in the quality of life of patients that received uh, PRT. And that's very important as we talk uh, before, that how much patients are affected uh, by this disease and by the uh, carcinoid syndrome. PRT will have um, significant impact um, in the treatment algorithm of patients with neuroendocrine tumors. Um, there are a little bit of nuances in each patient, but I think in many patients, we are going to move as a second line um, treatment. So you still start for your patients, uh, the first step is going to still be a somatostine uh, analog. But then, um, as your second um, line, once the patient progressed, PRT could be actually in the top of your, of your list. Um, obviously, there are nuances because if the patient has a lot of um, liver disease and no disease outside of the liver, you can argue that perhaps doing um, a liver embolization is probably very good, especially in patients with mid-gut tumors, which, which are the patients that we know that tend to respond really well to liver embolizations. Uh, patients that have a lot of um, um, astropathic disease, probably PRT will be um, a very good um, second line treatment, assuming that your tumors are continuing to be positive on Octra scan or in, in uh, Gadolinium 68 scan. Um, and there is a study, I, I believe, going on right now in Europe uh, comparing PRT with Verolimus, and that will be helpful um, in answering the question as well. If you look at outcomes, the outcomes with PRT um, look superior to most other treatments, both in terms of response rate and even more importantly, perhaps, as far as progression-free survival. Uh, that being said, we always have to be cautious when comparing different trials when two drugs haven't been compared to each other directly, and that's why it's going to be so important, in my opinion, to start testing drug A versus drug B in formal clinical trials.